Welcome everybody to the September 15th Skeptics in the Virtual Pub meeting for Triangle Skeptics. Uh, we have a uh, fantastic speaker tonight, Mr. Rob Palmer, who among other things is a uh, member of the Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia team. Uh, Rob also has a long and varied career, um, including actual rocket science, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, um, I prefer to call it rocket engineering. Yeah, well, the rocket yeah. science is a misnomer, but yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll I'm into that. software I'll science. What do you want? <laughs> uh, and Rob has uh, agreed to join us tonight and uh, give us a talk on what it is that the Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia project does, uh, its aims and goals, and how you can get involved as a pathway to skeptical activism. Um, so I don't think I have any other business to air right this second. Anybody else have anything before we uh, turn it over to Rob? Nope, I'm good. All right, Mr. Palmer, crack on. Okay, let's see if this works again. Yesterday, I had a, uh, two days ago when I did a presentation, I had a problem. The first time I shared it worked, and the second time, I did odd things. There we go. I see your whole window. You see it, and I go into presentation mode. Is that good? Yep. That's good. That's good. Nothing, yeah. nothing, ob it. nothing obscuring it. I see a video pane and uh, other things. You don't see those. Good. Okay. That's great. Very good. Okay. So, um, my background, as Jeff said, uh, I worked in aerospace. I did design spacecraft for a good number of years. Um, and I went on to design other things that I can't talk about still. Uh, <laughs> About five years ago, I joined the Gorilla Skeptics Project and uh, by Susan's uh, definition became a skeptical activist. When she first said that, I said, well, I'm not an activist. I don't know what you're talking about. But then you know, as time went on, it became clear that that was uh, a true description for anyone in that uh, organization. A few years later, uh, I fortuitously uh, and just out of the blue got hired as a columnist by Skeptical Inquirer Online. And I currently write uh, articles for them. Uh, oh. as the well-known skeptic. And you can follow me on Facebook, please. <laughs> the well-known skeptic. So I've been a speaker at conferences on skeptical topics. Uh, that includes Dragon Con, which I was talking about before, and also two years at a CSI conference, which is SciCon. And I have audio in uh, this presentation. So I'm going to do a uh, uh, this video with audio, which has nothing to do with GSOW, but it is just freaking cool. Just uh, confirm for me you can hear the audio. Yes. And that landing burn has started. Both boosters looking to be on track towards their respective landing zones. This was a historic first. Side boosters landing legs have deployed. Still seems like science fiction to me. Sure does. Okay, so why does Wikipedia matter? So first off, uh, it has articles in many, many languages. Some people don't ever come to realize that because they just know one and they only look at their own version. And they're all separate encyclopedias. Every uh, part that is a different language just has its own organization structure, its own management, its own rules. So that's interesting. Uh, the number of articles, I did this just the other day, so it's fairly current. English is by far uh, the largest, but it's, uh, there are a lot of other ones which have a, a large number. And uh, on the team, which I will tell you about, we work in many of these languages. Unfortunately, not Chinese. We really need somebody who speaks Chinese because that's a, oh. that's a large encyclopedia. So why does Wikipedia matter in the first place? before I tell you about GSOW working on Wikipedia. So uh, it's a huge audience for anything you write, right? It only uh, be in the USA, it's only beat by, by five sites. And this is the list that shows you in order. This is a, a web service called Alexa, uh, not, not the desktop thing, but uh, it was way before that, but it's alexa.com, I believe. And it will uh, give you the page view numbers by website. And I've actually, I've extracted only the English ones. If I left the Chinese ones in here, Wikipedia drops about 10th because there's a lot of Chinese sites that like there's an equivalent to Wikipedia or not Wikipedia, to a Google. 
and is an equivalent to shopping you know, shopping sites that only people who speak Chinese, maybe only people who live in China would use, but China's got a large population, so that kind of swamps it. But in the English speaking world, right? So Wikipedia is, the, is that high on the chart. And okay, what do we have? We have a search engine. We have videos that anyone can post. We have social media, Facebook, got Amazon. That wasn't there last year, by the way. <laughs> that came up because of the pandemic, I think, amazon.com. So it's a, it's a shopping site and yeah, who's got news on it? But Wikipedia of all of these is really the only one that you know, has information that you would look at. So that's why we say it's the number one source of information in the English speaking world. And you know how number one is it? Like how many people is that? The number at the bottom there, 95 billion with a B in a one year period of time. That's how many page views on all the, only the English Wikipedia. That's quite astounding. Uh, a factor of 10 over the whole uh, Earth's population. So it's got that huge audience. That's the first reason, right? The second reason is that journalists use it for their stories. So besides individuals looking at it, people who write for um, you know, other media. So we came across this by accident, USA Today Sports. Uh, there is a journalist, Ben Folks. He uh, interviewed, um, he was talking, he was writing about Ronda Rousey, who's a, a female fighter, because she sat down with the Hollywood medium, whose name is Tyler Henry. He's got a show on E! Entertainment Network. Now, normally uh, what happens is Tyler sits down with famous people because that's his shtick. And they, you know, supposedly talk to their dead relatives through him. And that makes the news. CNN will interview, you know, the Kardashians or because people know those people. And if they want to tell the story about how Tyler Henry got them in touch with their dead relatives, it's, it's big news. And normally it's a puff piece. It just reports what they're saying. But apparently, uh, good old Ben Fox, you know, didn't, didn't take it that way. He said, oh, he's been called, Tyler Henry, a grief vampire. And he was awarded the truly terrible television award by the Independent Investigations Group. That's uh, the people who are, um, work for the organization that writes my magazine, by the way. So, wow, where did he come up with that? Well, here's the Wikipedia article on Tyler Henry. He's called Green Vampire all over the place, right? Susan Garbick, uh, neurologist Stephen Novella, uh, David Gorski, they all use that term. And also, oh, look what's in Wikipedia. It reports that he won the Independent Investigations Group Truly Terrible Television Award. So it's clear that Ben looked him up, read the Wikipedia article and got that information. And that maybe soured his opinion of him, you know, accurately. So that's the a, that's a second reason. Um, the third reason is because Michael Scott says so. Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone in the world can write anything they want about any subject. So you know you are getting the best possible information. I love that. <laughs> now, you know, of course, if, if you don't, I'm not familiar with the show, uh, Michael Scott's persona is he's a, a typically arrogant, but uh, totally clueless boss. So pretty much any time he's interviewed on the show in this venue, he says something stupid. So. You know, that, that, was, that was a slam at Wikipedia. <laughs> but I have to say, this was done when Wikipedia was in its infancy, and pretty much he was right. Anyone could write anything. There wasn't a lot of oversight. In the you know, decade plus, it's become very structured, uh, structured and formalized. They even have bots which go and no, notice instantaneously if someone does vandalism to a page and remove it. Um, and if you write a new article, um, it used to be that you could leave it there, you know, you just post it and it would stay and you could have just made stuff up and it might've stayed for a very long time. Now, almost instantly, somebody will come along because they'll be notified that there's a new article and there's teams of people that do that and they'll review it and they might take it off if it doesn't meet the standards. So here is a point of view, a little bit contrary to Michael Scott's, but it's a little, uh, I don't know, you know, you, you see how you take this. This is from uh, a site that I really love. So even if we type the word that's under the video into the internet and find a detailed article about this printing technique, we can be sure that it's wrong. Wikipedia, please. It's run by a cabal of critical thinking extremists obsessed with perpetual refinement of factual information through rigorous citation of credible sources. You can't trust that sh <laughs> Captain Disillusion. So yeah, that was so good. I had I made a poster up and I had this in my office for a few years, just when, because people would always say, you can't trust Wikipedia, so. 
So, uh, all right, so how do people come across the information in Wikipedia, right? There is a search engine inside of Wikipedia. So uh, if you're already in the encyclopedia, you can search for anything within uh, encyclopedia right that way. If you're reading an article, so many things you would have noticed are linked, like they, they're blue and you click them and you go to another article and you go to another article and you go to another article. That's how you find things. Uh, these days, this is virtual assistants, right? I can ask Siri something and about, tell me about so-and-so and she'll return the first se several sentences from Wikipedia on that person or sometimes subject. But probably the way it, you know, most often is somebody just goes into search engine and Google something or things it. So some results from this. So uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's snake oil company, Goop, you type that and you get, of course, the first, first hit in the upper left is her uh, goop.com because that's what's going to happen. But uh, thankfully, um, what we have in a Google search is on the right side, you get the panel, which is pulls it from the beginning of the Wikipedia article. And so, you know, people see that and they click there. And instead of just having whatever Gwyneth Paltrow says her company is, you know, you do this and you might get some inside information determined to decide not to buy what she's selling. Uh, this is the uh, Hollywood medium I mentioned before, Tyler Henry. So again, first hit is, is uh, you know, Tyler Henry Hollywood.com medium. It's, it's his own show. He's a, he's a miracle worker. He talks to dead people. But off on the right side is the Wikipedia article, which we'll show a little bit later in detail. Uh, Blue Whale Game. So this was um, a, a thought that was out there in the world that millions of people were buying. The teenagers were playing this game that ended in suicide. And the Wikipedia article initially uh, you know, just made it look like that was true. So, so if you Google it, that's one of the reasons you get suicide prevention lifeline up front. But once you know, we came up with modifying that article so it actually doesn't say the false information anymore, it's really good because the next hit is Wikipedia. So what my team does is ensure that the best information is on Wikipedia, all right? We're a team of volunteers, over 110, and two of them were here from many countries. Uh, we edit in many languages, although I only do English. I'm not sure about Jeff. Um, it was founded a little over a decade ago. And we were all trained uh, through the GSOW program, which mostly means Susan Gerwick, but everyone always lends a helping hand. Uh, we improved the science and skeptical content of the world's number one information source. That's what I called it before, Wikipedia. And to date, the team since 2010 has written 1,860 major articles. So, and what we say is when we, we write an article and, or, and we all touch you later how we track that, how we track the page views on those articles. It's just if we start something from scratch or there's something that's already there, which isn't really a lot of information or it's bad and we totally restructure or expand it greatly, then we'll, we'll count that as sort of ours, although it's not, anyone can still edit it from that point. But it's like, we're responsible for it existing the way it does. So we count that as ours and we have 1,860 of them. New battle the dark side, that's the way I like to see it. Um, and uh, they have the numbers, uh, the, the Sith is strong, but we have and we understand the rules and the guidelines of Wikipedia. It's corporate culture, just like a, a corporation, Wikipedia has a culture of how you're supposed to do things. And like, you can't start working in a company and just do what you want because you'll get fired. In Wikipedia, a similar thing will happen. So we learn, you know, now not how to do that, to, to do it properly so we don't get uh, booted out. And so we understand the, those things and we learn the skills needed to be able to edit properly. Sometimes you can tell about someone or something from what its detractors <laughs> say about them. So, so here is from astrology.co.uk. Wikipedia oh had once been a utopian ideal, but the gorilla skeptics team has ruined it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We've ruined the fact that they can say any crap they want on Wikipedia about astrology. All right, here's one more. Rupert Sheldrake. I don't know oh, if you yeah. guys know who that is. So he, he's, you know, fast, fast friends with uh, other people of, of his ilk. Um, and he, he, he's uh, run experiments and then proclaimed that dogs have ESP. So, yeah, so this is what he said. The guerrilla skeptics are well-trained, highly motivated, have an ideological agenda, and operate contrary to Wikipedia rules. Their aim is to control information. Like he knows what Wikipedia rules are. No, you're wrong, Rupert. 
So despite claims made by our critics, uh, we do not control Wikipedia, right? And I'm gonna give you one, one case example of that. So I don't know if you guys know Kenny Bill. So he's pointing at his hero, Harry Houdini. So Kenny is a skeptic of some note, I will put it that way. He actually recently just became the fellow at CSI. Uh, he's got a, a column along with me in Skeptical Inquirer. Um, you know, he writes all about paranormal investigations. Uh, he's got his own brand. He, he does Facebook uh, and YouTube streaming of interviewing people and he you know, writes other things. So he's, you know, he's, uh, I thought he's he was also notable. a past speaker for our group. Sorry to interrupt, Rob. Cool. Okay. Very cool. Um, so um, I went to my first icon and, and the very first person I saw speak at my very first skeptical conference was Kenny Bill. And it was his first time also. So Kenny used to be a ghost hunter. He used to believe in that stuff. And uh, he jumped the fence after careful consideration and much evidence presented that changed his mind, which is a very unusual thing. So I thought he was a unique enough a person, a, you know, a ghost hunter promoting that blobs are ghosts, to now saying, no, I was wrong, and this is why the rest of you ghost hunters are wrong. That would be someone deserving a Wikipedia article. So I wrote this for him. 33 references, like from all over the place, including, I think, Popular Mechanics and People Magazine. Um, and then it went up for deletion. Somebody came along and said, no, Kenny is not Wikipedia notable. And I thought, this is insane. Uh, and there was a, I think it was a month long discussion. So you can have in Wikipedia several ways of deleting an article. One is a quick deletion. If it's just so obviously stupid, they don't even really call for a big vote. Uh, but this was semi-serious, they thought. So it went on for a month, people putting pros and cons. And, uh, and we, I lost, all that work was for nothing. And Kenny wound up dead at the bottom of the stairs. Now, it was very disappointing because he knew about the page and then I had to tell him, no, you're not notable. <laughs> you were taken off. And, uh, and he just- I mean, <laughs> He's that dead. Was, that was the Kenny. But, but, you know, Kenny still is active. He still does things. He, he became a C CSI fellow after that all happened. So, you know, he keeps doing that kind of thing. And, you know, hopefully we'll have a resurrection. And we'll have uh, Ken Kenny Biddle's page will be back on Wikipedia. I have it in my sandbox, which is what I was showing you. So it's in a protected location that no one else can see, but it's still there. And I, when it's okay, I can just push a button, ma make the necessary additions. It'll probably go through a deletion discussion again, but hopefully we'll have enough information that people will buy to keep them there. So, all right. So our our uh, our enemies, you know, think we're trying to control things, and we're against Wikipedia's rules, and we're evil, and we've just ruined, uh, you know, the social utopia that was Wikipedia. So, what do skeptical activists say about us? So, this is Russ Dobler. He's the head of the New York City Skeptics. Well, he's a board member. He runs a lot of the, their activities, and he's also the science and skeptical editor for AIPT Comics. So, th that's a site, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. It's mostly into um, you know, gaming and movies and things like that. But, um, but Russ is there to try to put in, in, inject some science and skepticism to people who wouldn't normally be looking for it. So it's really a good idea. You know, along the tabs across the top, movies, Avengers, da, 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 it's science, skepticism. And I've written articles for that as it has other skeptics. So it's great. So uh, on the left, there's Kenny, as you said, you said, you know him, Kenny Biddle is interviewing Russ on his skeptical health bar. And this is what Russ said. Uh, guerrilla skeptics on Wikipedia, I've said over and over, is the most important movement, the most important thing in skepticism, as far as I'm concerned. As I'm concerned. And I did not pay him to say that. So, <laughs> so um, all right. So what is the scope of, of this team's work? Well, it's the application of scientific skepticism to Wikipedia, right? We, we write new articles. We improve ones that are already there and are in bad shape or say something they really shouldn't be saying because it's not accurate. And we make tons of smaller improvements. Getting feedback. Getting feedback. So Eric, get... Eric's muted himself. It's Eric and I am trying to close one of these windows. Sorry about that, I can see you accidentally. So, all right, so I said we apply scientific skepticism. And what is that? I pulled it from the skeptics dictionary. It's assumed that the methods of science are the best methods for gaining knowledge. And skepticism is warranted when knowledge claims are made that reject the methods of science and contradict well-established facts or principles and go beyond the limits of science. So, so that's what we do. Basically, it's Carl Sagan's uh, quote, extraordinary claims acquire extraordinary evidence. And if there is not extraordinary evidence, then you can't put the claim on Wikipedia. 
And in fact, despite what Rupert Sheldrick said, we align with Wikipedia's position on fringe material. Now, he probably wouldn't think his experiments are fringe, but they are. Because articles must reflect current mainstream scientific consensus, right? And they require fair representation of significant alternatives to scientific orthodoxy. But that does not mean that dogs have ESP. That refers to legitimate scientific disagreement as opposed to pseudoscience. So these are the words of the Wikipedia uh, administration. Okay. So one of the things that this team excels at is writing important new articles or significantly rewriting the old ones, as I mentioned. So I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, this is Char Margolis. She's an American self-proclaimed psychic medium. We uh, wrote her article. Uh, Jeanette Wilson is uh, a, a spiritual healer. Uh, she is assisting in giving people medical advice with the help of spirits who were doctors and have passed on. Uh, she's also um, a, a New World Order theorist and an anti-vaccination uh, you know, advocate. And also she makes uh, anti-5G claims because they're going to give you COVID uh. or something like that. So we wrote her article. So, so people say, well, why do you write an article for somebody crazy like that? Well, because there's already a lot of information on these people online. There's their own website. There's their fans. There's a Facebook group. There's, you know, uh, puff pieces that were written by some, you know, journalist about them. But this now gives somebody the opposite side to look at, right? Um, Thomas John Flanagan, same reason. Um, so I'm going to look a little bit more closely at this article. So... You know, this, this guy uh, is really something. Um, he was caught red-handed and the New York Times uh, was written up about a sting operation run by Susan Gerbic uh, for using hot reading, which is looking at people's social media accounts and then feeding it back to them as if their dead relatives are telling him these things, right? This was accurate enough, uh, proven enough that the New York Times Magazine did a story on this. Right. Um, and one of the interesting things is on his page, we have all that information. And because Susan also writes for Skeptical Inquirer and she, she runs these things. So she's got three of the references talking about, you know, how we've proved that he did these things fraudulently. And also there's the New York Times. You know, that's a big one to have the New York Times on your site saying that, hey, you're a fraud. One of the other groups of things we do a lot of, especially in this last uh, year and a half, is vaccination-related pages. Uh, we wrote these pages from scratch, vaccine information statement. Um, I wrote America's Frontline Doctors, if you don't know about those. That's an organization that's a right-wing political organization. They spread misinformation about COVID. It was founded by Simone Gold. She's a doctor. Uh, it was promoted by the Tea Party Patriots. Oh, boy. It's promoted uh, alleged unproven treatments for COVID like uh, hydroxychloroquine, and also of course, anti-vaccination rhetoric towards the vaccines. Uh, another person on my team pulled out the, the lead of that, which is Simon Simone Gold and wrote her a separate article. Oh, and by the way, uh, she was also at the US Capitol and uh, you know, participated in the uh, siege of the Capitol and stormed inside the building. Uh. Yeah, and ironically, I, I have a, a friend whose mother told the whole family uh, the vaccines cause the disease and no one who has ever been back has will be has been vaccinated or will be vaccinated will ever be allowed to see me in my house again and when she sent that email to the family she commented this gold this simon simone gold knows what she's talking about she's Amer she's america's frontline doctors so that's what she did. And she didn't see these Wikipedia articles or if she came across them she ignored them. She only sent the information from their own websites. So uh, in fact, our vaccination related pages have 4 million plus views to, to date. And this is a little uh, movie just scrolling down the list of the ones we've done. Everything from the 1976 swine flu outbreak. Um, I saw Simone Gold go by there. Yellow fever vaccination. Um, let's see, there's other anti-vaxxers here like Tara Lewinstein. There's a site that, uh, that supports vaccinations on here. There's all, all both sides of it. Yeah, and, and some of these are in other languages, as you might be able to see. So it, it, it is quite fac fascinating. All right. So we also do conspiracy theories. I, I think Jeff is familiar with this one. Uh, the Momo challenge hoax. You want to tell us about Momo? I didn't read a lot about this. I saw this in your presentation, I think, right? 
putting me on the spot there. Let's see. The Momo challenge is a hoax and internet urban legend about a non-existent social. <laughs> yes, I know about Momo. Hey, I don't know about Momo. Yeah. So Momo was a, there was some type of sculpture made of what looks like the girl from the ring with long hair. And there was a uh, thing going around that this was a YouTube video where Momo would come and tell kids to kill themselves. And it's, it was a YouTube video, allegedly, and it would be passed around where she would talk and scare the crap out of kids and tell them to commit suicide. But the image they were sharing was an actual piece of art. So it's somebody just took it and ran with it. And Momo yeah. was challenging yeah. you to kill yourself. Yeah. Wow. It is a legit mm -hmm. creepy looking piece of art. It is a legit creepy, has big eyes, long. Black yeah, I, I saw that. I didn't want to put the picture on in case it like triggered anybody. It might have been triggered. <laughs> um, so, so similar to that is the Blue Whale game, uh, yeah. also called the Blue Whale Challenge. So, so this I'm going to show a little bit more closely here. So we, when we came across this, this, this was getting a lot of page views. And it was basically, if you read it, you believed it was real. And again, it was that uh, it was an internet game, I guess on social media that was convincing uh, teenagers to take more and more risks. And then the final thing is you kill yourself. And you know, people would, parents would go into a teenager's room and see a, oh, I don't know, a photograph of a blue whale on their, you know, on their nightstand and go, oh my God, they're part of this, they're gonna kill themselves. And if you went to Wikipedia and read the article, you might, you might not you know, be dissuaded from that belief. But then we went and investigated it and we actually, you know, added the information that this is really it just was a, a hoax. It's, it's an urban legend. Yeah. Like the, the data that was being passed along as true that this teenager in Russia killed themselves because of this. Like there was no evidence of that. And as the last line saying, claims of suicide connected to the game have been reported worldwide, but none have been confirmed. Right. So that we, we added all that. And why is that important? Because you know, they're in one year period, there were 10 million people, either parents and worried looking at this or teenagers wondering if, you know, if there's such a thing, if their friends are into it. That's a lot Rob, of I'll, I'll relay something that Susan put in the chat a moment ago that helps drive some of these page views. Oh, I didn't know she was in the, the chat. I'm Momo not watching the chat, by the way, just in case anyone thinks I am. I don't have the chat one of the uh, reasons that Momo became such a big deal is that one of the Kardashians tweeted about it. Yeah. Oh. I will, this is Eric, I'll also add that this shows a good way to get coverage is just to use the word suicide in anything. <laughs> well, that, that is true. And, and that's a little scary because I'll show you a page I did later and mention something about that. Okay, we also do humanist related pages. Here's a small sample. Camp Quest. It Phillips. Right, it's not our main topic at all, but occasionally we'll do Andrews. And because one of the things is, our, you know, our members are allowed to work on anything they want. There's large overlap between skeptics and atheists, or at least humanism. So, you know, people get interested in these things and they make a page. What does C-class article mean? Um, articles are rated on a scale. So the, um, there's featured, then there's good, then there's, I think it's uh, C, B, and a, and a or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then there's also things like start class. You can see Lucian Graves is a start yeah. class. There's also a stub, a stub class, which means it like, basically it's a few lines. So it's, a, it's basically the, the higher the rating, the more quality is in it. I believe good and, is and the top, right? What's that? I, I believe a good article is the best. No, fe featured, I think, is. Huh. Yeah, good, good okay. is, um, I'm guessing here, I know the numbers in front of me, but it might be like 0.5% and features like 0.01%. I mean, something like that. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I actually have written, I think it was two or three articles that that are rated good, and uh, I've not even gotten a feature going. Uh, science related pages. So much of our work is done to fight pseudoscience, conspiracy theories, and general woo. But we all also work on pure science and technology topics, right? We create or improve articles about skeptical spokespeople and those involved in science, voluntarily or involuntarily. Uh, you'll see why I said that. I love space flight and astronomy, so here are a few of my pages. I did astronomer Alan Hale. Uh, yeah, no, not, not that Alan Hale, that Alan Hale. <laughs> um, astronaut Bob Senker. I worked with him at RCA, and uh, he got to fly in a space shuttle. And uh, the, the involuntary uh, space uh, uh. astronaut was a catronaut or an astrocat. <laughs> Felisa Tuck, the one and only uh, cat that ever flew and survived the uh, space flight. Poor little thing. 
<laughs> so yeah, I I, I, uh, I greatly improved her article <laughs> to the point <laughs> where it has a lot of information, including the statue that was fundraised by uh, a Gomi, uh, yeah, a Kickstarter, I think it was a few years ago, because mm -hmm. like the chimpanzee who flew in space had statues, the dog Laika, the first one from the Soviet had, had a statue, yeah. and, and poor Felisa had no statue, so they did a oh. fundraiser and they got her a statue. <laughs> Uh, so sometimes there are unexpected topics that we write about, you know, things you're not really looking for, and it just happens. So this happened to yeah. me one day. I was driving, driving home, listening to Skepticality, and there was a uh, detective, not a psychic detective, but a detective who fights psychics, who was uh, being interviewed. And I found that fascinating. It was really an interesting story. So I had to go read more about this guy, and I went home and looked him up on Wikipedia. And this article was not there. There was no article. I wrote it. So that's what I did. I spent a few weeks and I put together all of the news stories about him and I wrote this whole long article about him. Um, so now when you uh, Google psychic fraud private eye, you'll get uh, the third spot there is the Wikipedia article. Can we read all about him? Mm -hmm. The two articles above that happen to be mine because I actually uh, a year or so later interviewed him for Skeptical Inquirer and wrote a two-part article on him. And I just have to put this because it was great. We normally don't get this kind of feedback. Every once in a while, someone that we write an article for, you know, uh, sends us a, something about appreciating it, but this was great. So Rob and Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia are doing such an amazing job of helping me spread the word about psychic fraud all around the world. Uh, undoubtedly, many vulnerable people will be helped by Rob's and Gorilla Skeptics efforts. And that, that warmed my heart. Yeah. Um, cause you know, the, I do a presentation on psychic fraud and it, it largely centers on the information I get from Bob Nygaard cause he's in the thick of it. I mean, you know, he knows what damage that does to people and it, it bankrupts people. They lose hundreds of thousands of dollars and it, you know, their, their lives are destroyed because they believe in psychics and having the information, you know, his article on Wikipedia that people could possibly find it before they fall victim, you know, is, is a boon. So besides writing new pages, we make smaller, as I mentioned, uh, you know, but they're important improvements to existing pages. We don't necessarily have to do something from scratch. So this is Gwyneth Paltrow's snake oil company, Goop. And prior to, you know, us getting it, it basically was just how much money they make and, you know, what they sell and a great company. So now the lead, and this is the lead, the part above the table content is the lead. And it, um, it summarizes, or it should, what's in the, in the article. So that last part summarizes the criticism that's in the article. Goop has faced criticism from marketing products and treatments that are harmful, described as snake oil, based on pseudoscience and lack efficacy. So Bob, I'm sorry, who determines the placement of a important uh, sentence like that? Well, so all of Wikipedia is a consensus effort okay. by, by experienced editors. Yeah, I can, I'll get a little maybe into that later, or we could also talk about it Q&A if you want later. Right, so uh, in, in the table of contents, you can see there's a whole separate section, criticism, and it is long. Um, we yeah. also put this flag on it on the right side, alternative medicine, right? That's just so people might see that and say, oh, okay, it's not real stuff. And why is that important? That's because of this huge amount of page views that Goop gets, right? It's, it's a big business and, and it's ever growing. In fact, I don't know if any of you saw this, they came out with a documentary on Netflix called The Goop Lab, which promoted it even further. So I don't talk about that in the presentation, but I, I actually wrote the article for The Goop Lab. And, you know, it really rakes the, uh, the series over the coals. So another page that we didn't write, but we had pretty uh, large impact on is What the Health, All right? So this was a documentary that uh, the original article looked like this. It was basically, oh, it's a documentary about how bad it is to eat meat and killing yourself and killing the planet. And okay, while you know veganism has its points, they were just you know, over the top. And now we put the scientific criticism from uh, you know people who are in the industry, meaning uh, actual people who know this stuff, and it's you know from dietitians, uh, medical professionals, and it says. You know, it, it, cause a confu a car it confuses car causation with correlation, post hoc ergo proctor hoc, cherry picking science uh, studies using biased sources, distorting study findings, and using weak to non existent data. So, you know, hopefully people will read that and, you know, take the rest of the article with a grain of salt. And by the way, all of that is in, you know, this is a summary of what's in the rest of the article. 
in that sec reception section there. And again, why is that important? Well, half of a million page views because it's a Netflix documentary and, and you could see the curve there and that's when it was first released. Mm. So I mentioned the Hollywood medium, Tyler Henry. So this was his entire article before, three little paragraphs, not that many, much more sentences, maybe two sentences to a paragraph, scanning it. And then the references and basically said, this is a show, he talks to dead people, he picked out his powers when he was 15. Now, you know, it talks about the uh, skeptical activists and even John Oliver concluding that he uses cold reading and hot reading and Susan Gerbeck <laughs> criticized him. And there's like a bazillion articles in this document that say, yeah, no, he, he, he just does it by, you know, tricking people. Critical analysis, also the paranormal tag. And again, why is that important? Almost a million page views in a year for, for this one person's Wikipedia article. And I'm sorry to interrupt again, Bob, but one of the things I, I thought was really useful was the little uh, image of the you know, alternative medicine or something like that. I mean, a graphic is worth a thousand words. Is that also yeah. a consensus thing or is, that, is there yeah. some- Every like, single there... thing on every single thing on the page, including the name of the page. I mean, if you might have not have noticed before when I showed you the blue whale, right. the, the, the original snapshot said blue whale parentheses game, and now it says blue whale challenge. So there was some long discussion maybe went on for months or longer than that, where the, no, it shouldn't be a game, it's a chat, da, 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 and by consensus, it was changed to challenge. So that does happen. I guess what I'm getting at is, is there a consensus within um, this community of what graphics to use, you know, so that there's, they're more, they're more easily recognizable? Um, it's the same thing. People who care about a particular page and they've edited it before will look at it and they'll see what's going on and they'll put their two cents in. And, and it's not just a straight vote thing. It's not like, you know, position A gets 50 votes and position B gets uh, 58 votes so that position B wins. You have to give arguments. And if you're just copying someone else and say whatever he said, that doesn't count. So you have to give rational arguments. And then if, it, if it's that close of a thing, an administrator, which is one of the few people that get paid by Wikipedia, uh, will come in and make a determination. Well, I guess I meant within the guerrilla group, are there... Uh, oh, accepted mm -hmm. graphics that you guys prefer to use. You think particularly eye catching. Well, there, there aren't all. There actually aren't all that many of them. Okay. Uh, right. th th those are created by consensus. Also, so there's only a few of them exist, and the ones that seem to really you know help us is the alternative medicine or paranormal. I actually wish there was a separate one that said conspiracy theory hmm. because I there is not, and that's not oh. paranormal, and it's not you know alter. <laughs> so it's, there's a difference. So. I don't know why there isn't. Maybe we should try working on one. Susan, I can't read what you're saying in the chat, but um, I just got so to how do, the group. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do we how do we choose what articles to work on besides uh, Susan saying, "Hey, work on this article." Um, so Wiki, <laughs> Wiki, Wiki, Wikipedia has a uh, thing that really helps us out, right? Uh, the, the popular right. pages, which if you know how to find them, you get this list. And you can sort it by number of views, daily averages. I've cut off the right side is all of the ways to filter it. And you can see what's having the largest impact currently or all of all time. And you can go look at the article and say, oh my God, this is a mess. It makes like Friday the 13th, and I'm looking at number six, look like it really is a problem. And you know, there should be some skeptical analysis there. And then you might go work on that uh -huh. one. That's one way. And there's another section that's paranormal stuff. Paranormal. Um, there's alternative okay. medicine. And look, look who's at the top. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's not like, you know, homeopathy or, or, you know, whatever, chiropractic. Those are on this list a little lower. But no, Gwyneth Paltrow gets her first shot there. Um, and this is religion and there's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Music, which is really weird. So somebody slapped the religion category on music. I guess it might have a whole bunch of categories on that page. So Yes, and the other way we find out is internally. So this is a little thing most people never see because it's a private group. This is what our GSOW secret cabal looks like, that once you're in our organization, and you can see up at the upper left, it says 115 members right now. <laughs> um, so, so, pe so people will do things like I did this morning, and that this is my post from this morning, right? And right now the countdown is at 21 minutes, but that was 12 hours, four civilians we launched to orbit for the first time ever. Hey, by the way, there's a Wikipedia article for this mission, but Netflix is a documentary and there's no article. You want to write it? Yeah, so that's my point. And boy, you're going to get millions of views if you do that. Yeah. 
And as of the last time I looked, or just two hours ago, there was still no article for it. I'm amazed. And it's a good, and so it's weird because by the way, it's gonna be, I think four episodes and they released the first two early in the week. But the last two aren't gonna be released until this mission launches. And like, oh my God, if something happens, it's gonna be so ironic that, because it's, you know, interviews with the astronauts and how they prepped for the mission and all that, oof. Anyway, so what do we do? We write new articles, I mentioned this, we write existing ones, uh, which were otherwise stubs, um, or maybe start articles. For existing articles, we do a bunch of things. We add scientific skeptical content and references. We remove invalid content and references. We copy edit to improve general quality for you know, any articles we work on. We do article translations. I mentioned we do uh, writing in a lot of languages, but sometimes we'll have an editor who likes to take an English one and translate it into Afrikaan, or you know, we can go vice versa. So articles that are in Wikipedia in different languages are not machine translations. They're either just constructed separately in those languages and they might have just a vague resemblance to one another, even though it's the same topic, or that could be a direct translation that a person did from one to the other, which is one of the things we do. We can also recommend article deletion. I have done that. You come across an article, this is not notable. Why is this here? And that will start a discussion. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, we maintain the article lead. That's the part that I talked about before the table of contents. It's very important because as we know, because I'm sure we've all done it, you want to look up something, what is this? And you read that part and that's it. You never read the rest of the article. So, you know, if that part is wrong or doesn't have the correct summary or criticisms, if the article should have criticisms, you're not going to, you know, really get that point. We add wiki links. So those are the, you know, words in articles that link to other articles. So if we want people who are reading something, you know, about, oh, I don't know, you know, psychic powers, we'll click, we'll add a wiki link if it's missing to the psychic page where we have edited extensively to show that that's not real. Uh, we'll add the banners that we were just talking about, pseudoscience, old medicine. And then there's a thing where if you don't have citations on paragraphs, even sections, even the whole article, you can say, hey, there's a citation needed here. And that gets flagged for editors to work on it yeah. a little bit. And one of the, I think Susan came up with this term, backward edits. So this is, there's an article, it's reasonable, but there's not a lot of support for like what was said. Maybe there's one thing there. Hey, but we can improve it by adding more things as references, especially if it's articles that are written by scientists or skeptics, right? And lastly, what we all do is we monitor articles of interest. So if you've worked on something, the last thing you want is to forget about it and come back a month later and it's all you know, changed in a way you don't agree with. So yeah. Wikipedia provides a tool called the watch list. Right, everything you edit is in a list and you click a button and see the whole list. Some, some people are, are, are good enough doing it that way. But you can also turn on email notification, which I have. And therefore, anytime something has changed that you care, to, care, care about, you'll get an email that says, hey, someone just changed this page. Do you wanna see the latest change or do you wanna see all the changes since you last visited, visited the page? Getting feedback from somebody, by the way. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I like that, that frame. So that way I can look at it and say, oh, it's just one of the Wikipedia bots, you know, improving things. I, I don't really have to care about it. But if it's something, wait a minute, why did someone change that page? And then I'll find out that someone did something I totally disagree with. Now, more often than not, other people are watching the page. And by the time I get that email and I pay attention to it and I go there, it's already been fixed. So, Something that's important once you're going to try to do that and say, well, what changed here? What, like, how did it change? Who changed it? When was it changed? What was it changed from too? So I'm going to talk now about the view history page in Wikipedia, which most just, you know, general uh, readers don't even notice is there. So this is the page that, this is the type of page that always opens when you go to Wikipedia by default, right? It's called the article page. It's just how you read it. Well, um, we're also going to go here. So this is what I'm talking about. It's the view history tab. Okay, so that history tab opens up like this and you see each entry tells you when it was changed and you can click on that and see the version. Like if I clicked on the April 27, 2018, it would open a version of that page the way it existed then. You could do in the beginning, the current versus uh, the, the, this one versus current or versus previous. 
You can see how many bytes were changed. There's supposed to be a text entry that says what was changed. This person actually didn't do that. It just says it was changed in resurgence and narrow of celebrity and social media. But if you click that, you'll get a page that shows you, you know, that. And if you if you click the email from the thing I was talking about before, which was, um, you know, this page has changed, it will show you the change. And then you can accept it or, or revert it. So here's one where someone uh, did in fact, at the very top of the article, put animation does not depict a model, but actually shows the earth. And, and that was correct. So they actually swapped out what was there. And this one was adding a, anything with a double wiggly uh, parentheses is a template in Wikipedia. And that puts a big banner on the page that says, uh, you know, vandalism is going on on this page and we're gonna protect the page. So the other part of Wikipedia that most people don't ever look at, which is a shame because it's really interesting, is the talk page. You can look at it and how the sausage is made in an article. So again, this is how you would normally open up the modern flat earth society on the article, right? And by the way, we're gonna go see the resurgence in the era of celebrity and social media, which I added that section to this page. Um, so this is, if I scroll down on, that, on the article page, this is what you would see. It would talk about what this is all about, right? That why do more people believe this now than they used to? But now if we'll go back here and we're going to say, well, we're, we're instead of article, we're going to go to talk. So now we flip over to talk and you don't see the article, but you see other things about the article. You see how many projects are uh, concerned about it. You see other things like, um, you know, it, it, won, it won an award or it was up for this or it was tried to be deleted, things like that. And scrolling down the page, it also has a table of contents sometimes. And you'll see one of the entries is just like was on the article page because somebody decided, I'm gonna talk about what was just added as, as that section in the article and I, and I don't like it. So this is what the person wrote. It's extremely biased, right? I noticed a very biased wording. I don't think this is how it should be in an encyclopedia. So interesting. So another editor answered, are you disagreeing with the statement that social media makes it easier for people to spread this information and attract others to erroneous ideas? I don't see how that's biased. That's just the facts, right? And then further down, well, but if the article is discussing flat earthers, then it should discuss them neutrally, right? Defining them one way or another is just your opinion. And then they were slammed. No, we base our content on reliable sources all reliable sources say that the earth is flat is nonsense. That gives us the right to say it is nonsense, right? And then they posted, this is great. Wikipedia's <laughs> rules on this. This is what I talked about before, right? No, we don't give equal weight to pseudoscience and nonsense. Stop and spinning, to, the frisbee. Stop and spinning to, frisbee. <laughs> and, and to summarize it on the bottom there, um, I can't read it because my thing is blocking it, but if it's not on yours, you can basically see it says pseudoscience doesn't deserve you know, equal treatment, so go away. So that was one of my, uh, you know, I, I will have to assume that person is a flat earther. So that was one of my only interactions with an actual flat earther. So how large is our team you know, that we're doing all this? Well, so to put it in context, the English Wikipedia has 42,000 registered, 42 million registered contributors, right? Huge number, um, but only a little over 122,000 as of this point are frequent contributors, meaning they edited in the last month, right? That's still a freaking large number, especially considering we have 110 or so, right? So there's no way we control Wikipedia, despite again, what Rupert Sheldrake and Deepak Chopra think. Um, so while we are uh, a little fish in the huge ocean, we do believe we make a difference. We'll have some numbers on that later. So, well, here, what's our impact? So we came up with something called Stat Badger. This was written by uh, Kyle Bullish of the Data Skeptic. He, he uh, actually wrote a program for us. It uses custom Python code. It tracks articles that, the, like in the categories I was talking about, that we started from scratch or substantially rewrote. It uses Wikimedia's foundations, APIs, and then it stores all the data in a relational database, presents oh, the results in a web interface. If that's over everyone's head, that's fine, because this is like how it presents it, huh. right? All right, these are all the articles that, that the Gorilla Skeptics have written up to this point, and we have 97.3 million page views. And it shows you for the last 30 days, over 2 million in the last seven days. And that, that, that changes every day, depending on the data. 
And then individually, you can look at the details. So, you know, this is the first thing you would see under that table. And I have it uh, ordered here and sorted by total views. So the blue whale challenge that I talked about, almost 8 million page views since we started working on it. These are all since we created them or started working on them. And then second one, the Momo challenge. People really like these kinds of things. This is the second one, almost 6 yeah. million at this point. And Susan's favorite topic, because she used to live in fear of it, 3.4 million for spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> And my favorite psychic, Tyler Henry, is number four of all times of our pages. And it goes on. So, so after looking at this, um, you might say, well, I can do this. Why can't anyone just edit Wikipedia on their own, like without, without any kind of training, right? Well, you can, of course. Uh, that's, that's the part of uh, you know, the, the encyclopedia that is good and Michael Scott was talking about it. Anyone can edit Wikipedia, but going it alone is extremely frustrating, right? The details of the editing are challenging. You get in conflicts with other editors. It, it turns people off from editing. And this happened to me. My personal story on this was uh, in 2006, I first made an account. I came back from Las Vegas. I went on Star Trek, the experience. I looked them up on Wikipedia and their description was all wrong. So I fixed it. Uh, and the next day, uh, I probably put five or six hours into it. The next day it was all gone, back to the way it was. Uh, I was so dejected. I didn't know, you know that you could even go back and look at the old version. I didn't know anything about it. So I started to type stuff again. And I just told me I just did a little bit. And within an hour, it was gone again. And I said, F this, I am never going to use Wikipedia again. And I, I got to tell you, that's probably what happens to a lot of people. Because I didn't understand. I was not putting references. I wouldn't, wasn't citing anything. Uh -huh. Right. Even though I was quote unquote right, I believe, I, I had no backup for that. So therefore it shouldn't have been in Wikipedia. So the other reason is the rules and guidelines like I was talking about there are daunting, you know, people understanding what notability is and that sort of thing. And so as the ultimate thing is, I mean, I didn't pursue and keep doing what I was doing to get, to get my stuff reverted, I just gave up. But I could have been, you know, an ass about it. And then you get stuff like this happen, right? you get an official notice from the administrator, you've been blocked temporarily because you've abused your editing privileges or worse, right? You've been, you know, your ability to edit the talk page has been revoked. You can't even type on a talk page. And then the ultimate one, blocked indefinitely from editing Wikipedia. Oh. So yeah, that can happen if you don't know what you're doing. So, so here's one of the things that, you know, screws people up is notability. And, you know, we actually got it wrong when we tried to do the Kenny Biddle one that I told you about. Uh, this is just, there are a lot of notability pages. Uh, I, I can't imagine the size of the book if you printed them all out and tried to bind them from Wikipedia that describe how to know what's notable and what's not. But this is just the main notability page. So it has the main categories, academics, crime victims, uh, pornographic actors and models. I like that one. Politicians and judges, they all have their own criteria, a sports personality. Right. So in fact, if you go into Wikipedia, this is a little uh, trick, if you type Wikipedia colon, then anything else you type will be not technically pages, but they're like rules of Wikipedia. So if you type Wikipedia notability, there is just some of the notability pages. The first one was the one I showed you the table of contents with, but there's a separate page for people, for organizations and companies, for web, for sports, for films, and each of those is huge. And so to understand mm. that without any training or even know you should look for this, like, yeah, good luck with that. Mm. So our training provides the knowledge and support to make you an effective editor. All right, so if you, if you do join us and anyone who does should expect to spend several months in training, uh, at least that's the official guidelines. I think I only took three weeks. Susan can look that up and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my memory of it. Uh, if you already know Wikitext, I didn't, but I, I went through the self-paced lessons very fast, that I know. Um, only basic knowledge is assumed. They don't assume you know computer coding or anything. Uh, you'll uh, learn not just how to edit, but as I mentioned before, what's important is why Wikipedia rules are the way they are and how you're gonna live within them. So your trainer, which is Susan, and the team are only a Facebook message away if you have questions while you're working it. And once you get through all of the, uh, you know, do A, B, do B, do C, do D, then there's a final project, and that's of your choice. You select it from a work list. It's a rewrite of a page, anyone you want to do. And upon graduation, you'll be a world-class Wikipedian or Wikipediatrician. I'm not sure what the right word there is. 
And <laughs> after graduation, you can work on whatever moves you. And uh, there's Susan. Is that a good mm -hmm. picture, Susan? Uh, so what she would need from you if you volunteered was you have to front turn Facebook. Yes, we still use Facebook. Now, if you don't have Facebook, um, people say, oh, I'm not on Facebook. Well, you can also just make an account with any name and just use it for this and no one will ever know it's you. So, you know, there's no real problem there. Um, you can create, a, you need to create an account on Wikipedia because we all edit with accounts. And then you can direct message Susan. Uh, it's easy to find her because I don't think there's anyone else with that name except maybe one cousin of hers. And, uh, you know, send her your Wikipedia username and uh, your email address, and then she'll put you into training. So uh, you can definitely help us make a difference. We always are looking for uh, people to help us out. Please consider joining the team. We have done promos and by uh, we, I mean mostly me. <laughs> I actually wrote some and produced them and got people together, uh, which are actually uh, uh, familiar voices to skeptics, interestingly, uh, from a whole slew of the skeptic universe. And um, we have those promos online at that address. I think there's six of them. You can visit us online at the gsowteam.org. That's under the banner of our nonprofit, Susan's Got About Time. Uh, and that's our email address, which you'll also find anywhere else you look in those other places for sure. And uh, if you've got a smartphone out, you could just scan that right there. And there you go. Four minutes to launch. Uh oh, I have to finish this. So, why do I do this? All right. So, personally, uh, I, I feel I make, I've made a significant contribution, right? If I stopped right now, 25 articles, 12,000 edits, and I haven't stopped, but my 25 articles get tens of thousands of page views every month, right? And to put that in perspective, the average nonfiction book will sell maybe 300 copies in its first year and less after that. So just, you know, that, that's amazing. People say, why don't you write a book? Well, that's why. Um, you know, having that kind of a reach is amazing. It, you know, gives me a huge sense of accomplishment. And those are my personal numbers after, you know, just joining in 2016. Nine million page views on those 20 something articles, not counting all the many, many more articles I've done smaller changes to, which we have no way of counting. But, you know, that, that, that is quite astounding. And, uh, you know, one of the things we say is, you know, we, we'll educate Pete the world in our sleep because yeah, this goes up every minute of every day. I don't have to be doing anything on Wikipedia and more and more people are reading my stuff. So uh, in, in case you never get to play one of the promos, I picked one out, I'm gonna play it right now. Here's one of our promos. Yes, Jeff's got the practice. Crop circles are so intricate and complex, it is not possible for humans to make them. You're not really getting the complete holistic birth experience unless you eat your placenta. I mean, animals do it and mother nature always knows best. Of course the world is haunted by ghosts and demons. It explains so much so easily that I barely have to do any thinking. I've watched a whole lot of flat earth videos on YouTube. You know, they convince me. It's all a conspiracy. There's no way we live on a spinning ball. We all have friends and family who believe these things, and much more. Well, if you're a rational thinker who is tired of arguing on social media and never getting anywhere, we have a solution for you. Join the Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia team, and we will teach you how to add reliable scientific and skeptical information to the world's number one source of information, Wikipedia. We write new articles and improve existing ones. We remove pseudoscience, paranormal, and alt-med claims, substituting the actual facts. And we operate in many languages. We've already reached tens of millions of people searching for information, but as you can imagine, we can never do enough. So please join us. All you need is a PC and the desire to help educate the planet. In fact, you'll be educating the world while you H2 sleep. Contact us at GS OW team at gmail.com. Guerrilla skepticism. The time is, is now. Music by purpleplanet.com. And please follow me on Facebook. You can snap that with your camera. <laughs> and that's the end. And we have one minute to launch. I say we take a break and chat amongst ourselves <laughs> and see what goes on here. Uh, if Deepak Chopra hates you, you got to be doing something right. That, that's what I say. <laughs> That's exactly what I say.
Thank you so much, Rob. Susan? Yeah, thanks. I know What's Susan up, doesn't like that our promo say we help ten, tens of millions of people because now we're almost at 100 million. Almost 100. But 100 million is tens of millions times 10. So. 10. <laughs> We could bump Man, it to scores of updates. Millions. Then they're all, as soon as you give the update, it's already too late. It's That's that is absolutely true. All right, so I'm going to take a two minute break because we're going to launch in one minute. Cross your fingers. Yay. I'm still here. Adrian's here. Jeff's here. Those are all editors. Romero's going through training. So there's all sorts of people here who can answer any kind of questions you might have. We'll make something up. Let yes. Rob go do his the thing. We're good at that. Jeff has been running to call the Scott. editor, Susan. Thank Jeff you. has been um, been uh, instrumental in helping out with Stat Badger to keep it um, working so that it's whatever the software stuff he does. It's just been great. But I know it's stable, so we don't really have you doing anything with that. Yeah, once I converted it to Python three, it's basically self supporting. Yeah, Kyle mm -hmm. did a great job writing it. Anybody have questions they'd like to have answers that I can make up an answer to? No. Um, we did have to come up with the name, Susan. Had to come up with the name. Shush, Rob. You're supposed to be watching a video or something. Something. <laughs> something <that's laughs> right now. Ignition. Blast off. Whatever. Going out. I'll watch it on YouTube in a minute. Um, so Mark Edward, the mentalist, famous mentalist, is sitting over here next to me. He, uh, we were doing a lot of activism back in the day. We didn't feel like our, the skeptic community was doing enough activism. So Mark had kind of come up with the idea of, of being more underground, more moles, mole-like and getting in and doing the dirty work and underground. And so he started calling things guerrilla skepticism. And when uh, I was, uh, I started doing this project, I started doing this. It wasn't a thing. I was just editing Wikipedia, you know, and people started saying, what are, what are you going to do next? And I said, I don't know. And so I kind of came up with some kind of training that I didn't have. I was nearly banned multiple times. I didn't know what I was doing. And so I just kept coming up with stuff. And uh, there was a guy named Tim Farley, who's, who had the website called what's the harm.net. And Tim had done a lecture about like this but it was on um on a cruise ship with james randy and it was you guys should edit wikipedia because it's really important wikipedia is is an actual skeptics uh, website because there are rules and they all favor uh, science and scientific skepticism and 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 not against and against the claims of the paranormal so I started editing wikipedia as I said I didn't know what the heck I was doing I was banned almost and um, somebody asked me if I'd like to give a talk. And I, I said, oh, OK, I'll give a talk. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. And I was no one. And so I said, um, I'll call it uh, Girl of Skepticism on Wikipedia. And that's how it got its name. And it was, it was not going to be anything. We were just like three people <laughs> in Wikipedia over email together. It was nothing. It was never, ever supposed to go anywhere and do anything. And I can't believe we're about to hit 100 million. In fact, there was a time I was giving a talk and we hit 10 million. And I had written down on a piece of paper, you know, I was giving the talk and you have to write down the, the stats every day because they change every day. And so I had it written down and I was giving my talk and I pulled out the paper and I said, oh, we're at 10 million, such and such. And I said, 10 million, wait, I think I wrote this down. I think I have an extra zero. I didn't even believe I had the right number. I was like, what? No, wait, one zero comma zero zero. And I had to sit and think about it for a second because I was blown away at what the numbers were. And I'm still, I'm just cannot believe that we're almost a hundred million of, of uh, Wikipedia page views. It's incredible. Oh. You girls are quiet. What a nice little group you are. <laughs> Adrian, you have something to say? No, Adrian always does have something smart to say. Oops. Well, that's putting me on the spot. <laughs> well, yeah. Go for it, Adrian. What are you working on now, Adrian? I'm working on Carolyn Porco's Wikipedia page. Awesome. Speaking and I actually get to. I get to talk to her. It's really cool. You're having Zoom Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty cool because, uh, yeah, I've I've been in contact with some pretty amazing people just because of this project. And I read a book recently by 
um, Samra Zafar, who's a Canadian, and I'm a Canadian, by the way, if anyone doesn't know that. And I was so impressed with the book. The first thing I did, because I work with Susan, is I went to her Wikipedia page and <laughs> it was terrible. The no picture and two sentences. So I reached out to her and said, hey, you know, I'm a volunteer editor would you be able to upload a picture and I'm gonna do your Wikipedia page? Well, she got back to me and said, can we Zoom? And I'm like, oh, I've got this author who's won these awards, has been a New York Times bestseller, who wants to Zoom with me, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Do you know, do, 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 do you know about my uh, my graduation project and how jealous oh, it makes back, me? Huh? Oh, there's Raj. <laughs> yes, they're, they're, they're well on the way, manage and cut off, everything has gone fine. Uh, it's amazing. Um, uh, so do you know about my original project, Adrian? I do not. Oh, just like yours, just like yours. So astronomer uh, Alan Hale, you know, not the skipper on Gilgas Island, right? Right, Hale Bop. Right, right. Hale there's, from there, Hale Bop. There's one photograph of him that was in Wikimedia column, co Commons, which by the way, is people don't know, that's where all the photographs need to live that you can put on Wikipedia. You can't just put anything up there. Right. And so we want to, and it was a horrible picture. And it's still the one on his page because tried to contact the guy. We even had like go betweens to try to contact him. And there's like not responding, doesn't read email, he doesn't know what a computer is. He's just on a mount looking at comets and stars all the time. <laughs> right. And, and five years later, he still has the same crappy photograph, and there's nothing I can do about it. We have to send somebody out to go find him on the mountain and take a freaking picture. That's what I get for taking the project of, of an astronomer. <laughs> There you yeah. go. <laughs> we have a lot of frustration with getting good photos of people who are in science. That has yeah. just been such a frustration. It's like, take your cell phone and pick it up and turn it to yourself and take a selfie and then upload it to this place. I'll show you how, but we can't get them to do that. They're, they want to, they want to, when you finally get a hold of them and ask them to upload a picture, they want to upload this professional photo that was taken someplace. And then the rules are really strict because you can't necessarily do that because you aren't the owner of that photo. You don't own it. Yeah. Right. So it's been uh. like, you know, there are other photographers out there. There are cell phones. There are just mm -hmm. hand the phone to your kid. I'm sure they can figure it out. Use your astrophotography equipment. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, I'm sure there are more pictures that exist of you, but. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh so get this one. I, and I actually forget who this was. Oh, I can't remember who this was. But somebody, I got them to upload a photo. They took, they, they had a photo. Yeah, I took this with my camera. They uploaded. Oh, great, I'll use it. And then it gets deleted from Wikimedia Commons. And the reason is he didn't own this photo. I go, what are you talking about? It was from his camera. So when you take a photo and upload it, I guess unless you strip stuff off of it, there's metadata, right? Which says, and one of them was camera owner and had a different name on it. He, and he said, oh my God, that was my wife's camera. She got it from her cousin. <laughs> oh. yeah, check. There's, there's all, well, they don't, there's not a person physically checking everyone because there's probably, you know, a thousand uploaded. <laughs> I don't know. I've had, my, I've had my photos. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's probably it's, it's a computer algorithm that's just yeah. doing. So, so I did, uh, you know, nothing to do with guerrilla skeptics or science at all, but my wife is a docent at an, an outdoor uh, sculpture park museum. And I go there a lot with her and the, the page <sighs> is horrible. So I fixed the page up and I took a lot of photographs. They're online and I uploaded them. And within a week, they're all gone. It's like, no, because the rules of bath, that sort of thing, uh, is you cannot take a picture of a photo, uh, you cannot take a photograph of a sculpture that is in a place that you need admission to get to because it's the owner's property, even if you took the picture there. Wow. Like, well, oh, I got some deleted please. from, from uh, Wikimedia Commons. I got the Chicago Bean removed. What is that? And it's, it's on a public right. land oh, oh. in Chicago, but the oh. artist that made it has copyrighted it oh so therefore you can you take a picture of it for your own personal use but as soon as it goes into wikimedia commons of course then it can be com commercially used so it got deleted from this is scaring commons. people <laughs> no, well, you remember you remember this all started with this the uh monkey selfie like who owned right. the rights to that did that's the monkey right own yeah. it or did someone yeah. else like I don't know about the monkey selfie. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, you'll get down a Wikipedia rabbit hole on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it who it's owns, who page owns page the right to these, this photo? Does the it monkey own the right to the photo? Because the monkey actually took the picture of himself. Himself. 
the monkey picked <laughs> up the camera and took its own selfie. So who owns it? Does the monkey own it or does the, mm, the but camera? But I'm pretty sure, at least in the animals U.S., don't own it. animals no, don't have huge, ownership rights of anything. There was so. huge litigation. Like, mm, I think it went to federal yeah. court level. Mm, like this It was a whole thing. thing. <laughs> and it ended, up, it ended up being common property because they ruled that the monkey took the picture versus the mm -hmm. photographer. Okay. But so, the photographer set up left the camera in a place turned on and waved <laughs> yeah but the monkey it. picked it up and the monkey was the one that uh, oh anyway so oh it. let's talk oh about my the gosh the things we are i'm so, concerned with but the other thing so so susan actually pushes this and this is neat uh because she uh, has pushed us to get audio recordings of people that we do pages for and that's really cool yeah oh i've been stuck in a corner with more people than you would imagine to get audio in a nice quiet place <laughs> like here Come here, famous yeah. person. Because in, in the in, info I box, here in the corner, here. In, in the come info into box, the stairwell with me. There's, totally there's a place you can put the audio. Yeah. Come into this empty room with me. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, you got to get it so it's the best quality audio as you can get. Several people on our team, that's what they really enjoy doing. Rick Thomas, that's that's his thing. He loves to go to conferences. He figures out who the speakers are going to be ahead of time that don't have audio on their page, and then he's like, "I'm going to get their audio." And he goes around and gets their audio. Hi, I work for Girl of Skepticism on Wikipedia, and I need your voice. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. That's his thing. I'm fine with that. Go for it, dude. Yeah, so so let me share the screen. Here is, um, I just picked one at random that I happen to know has one, Cara Santa Maria. My name is Cara Santa Maria. I'm a science communicator, a journalist, a podcaster, and a television presenter. I was born in Plano, Texas on October 19th, 1983. I currently reside in Los Angeles. I am the host of Talk Nerdy with Cara Santa Maria, my personal podcast, and a co-host on the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe podcast. And I am incredibly passionate about science literacy and skepticism. There we go. I don't know who recorded that one, but actually I could find out by- could find out. But I won't, but. Yeah, you should know. But it's Kara. Like, it's not that hard to get Kara to do that. Yeah. Because she's well, yeah, but see, like, you can't just record her saying it, like, like yeah. someone, well, I'll send you something. Well, no, because then I can't upload it, because now right. it's your property. We have to own it to upload yeah. it, or yeah. they have to record it and yeah. upload it. And upload it, it themselves. So we can't yeah. take any audio off of uh, the internet. Yeah. If, but anyway, we're talking about the more complicated things, the audiovisual mm -hmm. stuff is like, it's, it's easier to change text. It <laughs> just is. It's much easier to change text. <laughs> yeah. Close quoting and, uh, and paraphrasing is I'm uh, a fun area person, of yeah. concern for changing text. So everybody on the team has their favorite kinds of things to do. And, and, and Rob, you know, I'm listening to his presentation, thinking, looking at it from your guys' eyes, thinking, this is scary. I mean, gosh, it sounds Could really it come across technical. that way? No. Well, to me, it did because I'm, I do all the training, but I am really a basic editor. I, I don't get into the technical stuff as much as some of my editors do. Once they graduate from my, my training, you know, they just go on and just excel. Well, I, part, I so what part I, did you I, think was scary? Well, I'm just thinking there's a lot of technical stuff. And, and, and um, I think to somebody who's maybe not more like me who's who can turn on a computer and and um can maybe word process and stuff like that and, and i think it might be intimidating but it really we walk you through um the only skills i need is are for you to be able to be on on the internet <laughs> you have to be able to um you know take constructive criticism and follow instructions and i will i break all the lessons down into very tiny chunks and I, I'm happy to zoom with somebody and you know take down the most basic stuff. Susan's Something, always I, there. I'm not um yeah. I'm not a techie person and I'm not a word person. So I, if you if you show me a wall of text, I'm gonna freak out. And that's exactly how Wikipedia is written. If you're trying to learn Wikipedia on your own, it's just text. And mm -hmm. and it, they give you every mm -hmm. rule and every possible possibility of of ever you might encounter and it's the base it, it's there's nothing basic about how to edit wikipedia so i i've trained people very very simply and they always outshine me you know whenever we get to the end and um uh, and susan doesn't 
she's not exaggerating when she says she's available because I think in early in my training, she was, I think the longest she took to get back to me was 45 minutes for any question that I ever had. Not to say that that's what she's going to be like if she's doing something, but I was always amazed. In fact, when I first reached out to her after reading uh, an article in science-based medicine talking about her, that's how I found her. I sent her an email and I swear it was within the hour that she got back to me and she was shopping. She was so excited to get a new editor. <laughs> was it really shopping? I'm feeling all this peer pressure right now. I, I actually remember when I contacted you too, because of course, when I saw your name, I looked you up and I Googled you and, oh, she's got a Wikipedia article. Oh, she's a big deal. She's not going to even talk to me. Well, yeah, I was expecting some, you know, minion was going to get back to me in three weeks. Training is my Yes, that's favorite. right. The I account replied training. and they said, wait a minute, is this really Susan Garbick? <laughs> I love training. It's so well, much this, fun. Well, this helped my nihilistic existential crises I've been going through for like the last... 12 months or more oh. oh well you know what it is a feeling of power the thing mm. that my team has been able to do mm -hmm. is excruciatingly powerful because the um not only you're educating so many people but you're all the people who are reading are just everyday people mm -hmm. you know most part but there's an awful lot of people who are reading it that are the media and the media i don't mm. rob didn't mention this in his presentation oh yeah i did i did, yeah, did, you did. Oh, i'm sorry i get uh, yeah, I had the USA Today thing where, oh, okay, yeah. uh, where Ronda Rousey was uh, sat down with Tyler Henry. Yeah, yeah. We have construction going on here at the house. So um, that, that's what's going on is when the media gets a hold of it, then it could be millions of people reading that media person's article. And so you're basically yeah. educating far more. It's not only, how do I say it, Faith? We're, it's a feeling of empowerment. And in this horrible time we've been going through the last couple of years, or the last four years, in this anti-science yeah. magical thinking world we've been in, and even before that, I've been saying in the community, we got to take this seriously. Yeah, I know they're psychics and they're, you know, whatever, and people pay. Yeah, I know they're flat earthers. So what? What are they harming? It was just that this perpetual magical thinking conspiracy theory kind of thing even if they're believing in something like the hollow earth i mean it just it, it just you, we can see now that we have gotten ourselves into this world because we really didn't take it seriously we didn't fight against the lowest hanging fruit which we should have taken care of a long time ago and now we're in this mess absolute nightmare mess where people are yeah. in yeah, drinking, people, people drinking are, insect you know, uh what is that gargling they're taking infectomycin there but this, people this people active? people are active actively not understanding how they are hurting people oh yeah and that's Absolutely. that's the frustrating part and that's so, the, the, the ramifications wait, wait, you, you still have people and this was a month ago but like the woman you know we still were well over six hundred thousand dead in the u.s and she went to some official thing to protest masks and vaccinations and she was of course i don't see people dropping dead in my front yard or my driveway no one's dying of this <laughs> i know everybody this i is, know pretty much is vaccinated and i keep I, saying if this, was, if this was as bad as ebola like if people were hemorrhagically bleeding out in front of you maybe maybe maybe, maybe. and i hate that i'm saying yeah maybe. It, it, it's, yeah cl clearly maybe these days so, so the, the other part of the recruiting tool, I'll, I'll, I'll say, and I don't ever put this in the presentation because it's like weird, but, but Susan knows this. Like I worked in a place with a lot of people who had all these out there beliefs. And before I got into GSOW, I would just like have to look on the internet and search links and all right, I'd find the Wikipedia article and maybe it wasn't that good to dispute whatever they were saying. Well, so then I, okay, I'd be in a conversation with five people and they're talking about this nonsense. I'll go home that night and fix the Wikipedia page and then I'll send it to them in the morning. <laughs> I did that a lot. Have you seen this Wikipedia page? I've absolutely yeah. done that too. It does. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, look, it's. it's K, KT tape. Uh, Kinesio KT tape. tape. Oh, oh, no, can we please one. not talk about KT tape? I'm a runner, and that is just like the biggest ever. Like, you're going to spend $50 on something that's not going to help you. Yeah. Like, well, they do. Like, it's purple. Or pink or green. Or whatever. But so, I can buy running work. wicked fabric in this color. Faith, it must work. It, it's, I it's the same thing like I went to a running retreat and they gave me Highlands um, 
oh, I can't remember because I've had two Manhattans already. But <laughs> but the the homeopathic Highland, she's drunk. the homeopathic Highland stuff, and I was just oh. like, I really respect you as an ultra runner, but I know this is a sugar pill and it's not going to kill me, so I'll just take the whole damn box. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll have, I'm not gonna OD on this at all. Oh. But you're you're a rep for Highlands, and Highlands represents the Boston Marathon, and it's a homeopathic dilution, like magical, ah. more magical thinking. Yeah. It happens. It happens in yeah. the running community way, way too much. Way too much. It, way it too happens much. in every community. Yeah. Well, that's. Yes. I'm sure there's bowlers out there with their KT tape on them and. And they're yes. homeopathic, or somebody's swinging something in front of them, hypnotizing them. Oh, and cupping. You have to go for cupping. Oh, and cupping. Oh, you know, cupping. another thing I wanted to mention is that what we've been doing is, and Rob mentioned this about the people. When when people in the science community or in our in the skeptical community are starting to come to a point where their 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 notability is at a standard where we can write a Wikipedia page and it won't be deleted, which is really hard as rob said notability has got a lot of rules and so you get somebody up to they're right at that level we spring on it and we write the wikipedia page and then what it does is it gives them another push because once they're once you have a wikipedia page then as they're rising up for a better word you know in the world of media then media can look into it and start saying oh, this person is an expert on this. And it's Wikipedia page becomes a one-stop shop, especially if it's got like a photo and it's got audio and, and links to videos that person has done. It just makes them a little more likely to be interviewed for a subject. And the person I'm thinking of right at the top of my head is Mick West, which is a person that we wrote the Wikipedia page for. He was going up in fame. He was getting there. He's getting there. We write the Wikipedia page and... Here comes this UFO phenomenon, and he's he's like the go-to guy. And and uh, yeah, he was on ABC News and CNN. Yeah, and Chris Como just had him on an MSNBC or CNN. And so a lot of these people, once the Wikipedia page is there, it just it's just a little up. And some people their careers take advantage of it. Some people don't. It's it's kind of a gray area. And I was looking at what Jeff has done. He wrote the Wikipedia page for Matt. Kirshner, who is a comedian and a, just a funny as heck guy, but he's also really popular in, in our community. Mendisa um, uh, Thomas. I know Mendisa. Yeah, she's an activist in the humanist world. I met her at um, Dragon Con and I said, all right, we're taking pictures. Because <laughs> her page was my final project. His final project. Oh, that's that awesome. Was, really? Yeah, that's and so, awesome. He didn't have photos, so I you didn't have a photo, right? So I think that's right, yeah. And it's easy. The easiest thing to do is just for one of us to take the picture. And that, I'm by profession a, a portrait photographer, so it's really simple for me to do. But it's it's like that's what I wanted to do. And the third page that he wrote was for this really awesome woman in Germany. Her name is Natalie Groms. We've written her Wikipedia page in multiple languages after Jeff wrote it in English, and she was a homeopath she was a doctor an actual do medical doctor in germany that was a homeopath where a lot of the doctors in germany were homeopaths and then she she realized she wanted to write a book on um the you know why do people put down homeopathy and as she was doing the research for this she realized mm -hmm. this is nonsense and so she's become an outspoken critic of homeopathy in Germany. She's got another book out. She's doing really well. This woman's had death threats, I believe. You know, it's just, she's the nicest, wonderful, great woman. And so that's a page that um, Jeff wrote. And it's already gotten 17,000 page views. And it's probably got a bunch more in, in German and in, in uh, Dutch and other languages we've mm. written it in. Oh, I just scrolled through the chat. So I actually finished in a month. Yeah, I, I re recollected it was a short amount of time. Cool. We have people who do longer and we have people who do shorter. Uh, we have a man in, in uh, South Africa has finished in four days. It would have oh. been three. It would have been three, but I just couldn't get back to him in time because of the time difference. I'm in California. So in three days, you too can be a Wikipedia editor. You can be an extraordinary <laughs> Wikipedia editor. And that's what he does. He just I'm, translates everything. I'm feeling Africa. the peer pressure. I'm feeling I have witnesses. Yeah. I have witnesses. I'll do it. I'll do it because I'm, right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
Yes, I will do it. Look, at, look at Romero's yeah, like, but, 